Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. We've got a fun one for you. As usual, we're going to demo a piece of equipment and we're gonna create some multi-tracks, which of course you can download and work with. But we're also doing a collaboration with another YouTube channel, which you may or may not know. So stay tuned. Gracie, where have you been lately? I'm alone here waiting for your call. You're probably somewhere high and lonely, pining for a way to slow your fall. I know you got a funny way of showing all the ways you cope with being free. We could have been amazing if you'd take a break from blazing. No, oh, Gracie, baby. Come back to me So if you've watched the channel before, you know that we like to put the gear that we demo through its paces, meaning we like to record all kinds of different instruments and give you some multi-tracks to download and also do giveaways. So without further ado, let's talk about the new range of Audient products. So they've gone and upgraded the ID series. And what they've done is they've just made them quieter, they've got more headroom, all the things that we want out of Mike Priest. And if you stick around, we have Julian Krauser coming in, who's gonna give us 
all of the specs on this. So you're not just gonna have the Warren demo recording a song from scratch, showing you how to use it video. You're also gonna hear from somebody who's really smart. Somebody who knows all of the technical specs of this unit. And I will tell you now in advance, it specs out ridiculously high. Like far, it, this unit fights way above its weight, like ridiculously. It is in the same league as units a lot more expensive. So I've discovered Julian because we had tried something which I didn't like, so I didn't review it. And then I went looking to find why I might not like it to see other people's reviews. And I found Julian's review on the product and everything that he didn't like about it, he could prove with mathematics, all kinds of reasons why, all, you know, thresholds and um, distortions and noise floor and all that stuff, all the stuff that people like to get hung up on. And it is interesting that if something doesn't spec out very well, it also isn't usually very musical. So it's nice to know that the technical side and the musical side actually do come together. So. Let's not keep waffling on about that. Let's take a look at the ID4. Okay, so what we have here is a mute control here for the speakers. This ID button, you can use it to control certain functions of your DAW. Um, we have never done that, but my guess is if there's something that's repeatable and you need to do, you can assign some function onto that. Okay, so we have two inputs here. One is a mic line input and one is just an instrument input. If you go to the back here, you've got the mic line input there, then you've got the phantom on off control, which is good because of course, if you're using a ribbon mic, you do not want to turn the phantom on. Also on the back, you've got a USB-C connection, obviously to go to computer, and you've got left and right output, obviously for speakers. On the front, headphones here, and this is the instrument input here. So it's all pretty straightforward. You've got uh, a monitor mix control here where you can go between the input of the signal or the DAW, which of course is going to be useful because you know some of the DAWs you use, some of the computers you use, et cetera, will have different levels of latency. We didn't have any issues with latency on this that anybody complained about. I didn't complain about, nobody I know complained about it. However, you might find there's an instance where there's so much latency, maybe there's a lot of plugins on it. Who knows what's causing the latency? You know, you've set the buffer size to the, the best, the fastest one you can, but you're still getting latency. So you might want to just go a little bit more to the input of the signal coming in so that when you're monitoring, you're hearing the direct sound of the vocal or, or the guitar or whatever it is, and you're not fighting with the delay, the latency that would be caused. So and that's a feature on pretty much any one of these kinds of devices. Um, and then of course here, you've got a stepped, which I like, a stepped monitor control. And there, of course, is the indication of uh, level being sent to your monitors. So it's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's, it's, it's relatively idiot proof. It's substantial. It's made of metal. It's not really heavy, but it certainly feels substantial for a small device here, which is like you can fit into, into your hands. It's got a lot more weight than you'd anticipate. I mean, the stuff's always been well made. I do like this redesign. They're keeping a very similar look to the old one, but I, I, I like it. I like it, the kind of more, I suppose this is what gunmetal gray, is that what you would call it? Who knows, but it's sturdy, sounds great. Um, well, you're gonna hear that it sounds great. So let's head over to Julian just for a couple of minutes to hear about the specs of the unit. And the last time I was talking to him, I was talking about Tex-Mex. Did somebody say Tex-Mex? Hey, Julian here, and I think it's no secret that I'm a big fan of transparent audio equipment, meaning that the equipment itself does not have any sound on its own, but simply records and plays back the original audio. And I think that's exactly what Audient is striving for with the ID4 Mark II. I made a lot of measurements of this interface, and in short, here's what I found. For the mic input, the frequency response is very flat, which means that all frequencies in the audible range are recorded equally well. The preamp noise with minus 130.4 dBA is extremely low and this allows you to get ultra low noise recordings even with insensitive dynamic microphones. The dynamic range of the mic input is also excellent and this way you can leave yourself a nice amount of headroom while recording without introducing any additional noise. This really comes in handy with more dynamic sound sources 
like for example drums. I also checked out the performance of the line level input and it is great as well. The frequency response in the audible range is very flat and you also get a very high dynamic range and the total harmonic distortion is as low as roughly minus 100 decibels which is arguably completely inaudible. So on the input side the ID4 comes very close to being completely transparent. And this trend continues with the audio outputs. The frequency response of the headphone output is ruler flat and it also has quite a bit of power to drive more power hungry headphones. I want to quickly mention that the headphone output only reaches its full volume potential if you use the USB Type-C connection. You can use the interface with a common USB 2.0 connection and the volume for most headphones will be decently loud, but if you have more demanding headphones I highly suggest to use the USB Type-C. The line level output is one of the highest performing outputs I've measured in this price range so far and in some aspects the ID4 Mark II actually outperformed my measurement equipment which really goes to show that Audient has achieved full transparency with the monitor outputs. So all in all I think Audient has done a great job with the ID4 Mark II and the objective audio performance is on a really high level. If you're a fan of clean audio recording and playback the ID4 is definitely an interface to look out for. That's it for me, back to the studio. So before we get stuck into the multitracks, don't forget you can enter to win or one of these as well. And of course, download the multitracks below. Okay, so here's the single mic on the drums. Absolutely fantabulous. Um, I don't have any EQ or compression going on on that, so you'll probably, well, you can do whatever you like for the mix, but you should be able to use it pretty much as is. Um, next up are two shakers that I played with the tambourine. I did add some reverb on this mix here. So let's put the shakers in with the, with the mono drums, and this is what we got. So people always ask us how we did the one mic on the drums. And as you can see, and here, the results are fantastic. So let's go and check that out. So this is a fairly similar position that we do when we do mono drum miking. Some people will put a mic directly over the top, um, a mono head overhead position. This is a little bit, not quite Andy John's where he has one back here, but it's that kind of idea. It's got to spread pretty much of the whole kit. Um, I've always liked it slightly over the floor tom facing down. You're going to get snare, which has been turned off, <laughs> and kick here. And, you know, it keeps the cymbals out. I did say to Blair before performing, be careful on the right because it's fairly close to that. You know, he, he's smart. He knows it's only one mic, so it'll be fairly balanced. Again, like we talk about all the time when it comes to using minimal mics on a drum kit, it really just comes down to the drummer being a balanced, even performer. So in the spirit of the inexpensive equipment, we're using another Lewitt microphone. This is a 440 Pure. It's a fixed cardioid. So cardioid microphone, large diaphragm condenser pointed at the kit in mono. The bass is, there's actually, you'll see two inputs, but they're identical. So all that is, is just a duplicated. So what I've done with the bass, I've got the DI here. I can turn the uh, plugins off, and this is the DI on its own. And what I've done is my usual trick, where I've used this first DI here only for the low end. I've also got an Arvox on it as well, just for some extra compression. So it's all low end. So all of the mics so far have been the LCT, that's the Lewitt LCT 440, which again is very affordable. Um, the acoustic here is also a Lewitt. And as you can tell, now that's quite hit, that's smashed quite hard to be honest. So I can take all the effects off, including the reverb, and this is the direct sound. But 
then I EQ'd it by just, first of all, high passing, get rid of unwanted low end. And then I used a de-esser on it because it was occasionally kind of just like little picky noises. And, you know, I use a de all the time for this. And then I squashed the schnizzle out of it with an MV2. None of us had any compression on the way in, so that's now on the mix. And then I panned that to the left, and then I sent to just a good old-fashioned D-verb to the right. So you've got reverb on the right-hand side and acoustic on the left, and this is what we get. Now, for the electric, I did the opposite. It's an electric with a tremolo on it, um, and I've got an REQ again, just using it again to high pass, just to get out of the way of the, the low end from the bass guitar and, of course, the low end from the kick drum. Together. And again, with this guitar, all I did was obviously um, get rid of the low end, but I did use a reverb as well. And you guessed it, the electric guitars panned over to the right and the reverbs panned over to the left. So last but no means least, it's just the last couple of elements, which of course is the piano. Which is very dynamic. You know, it's a crappy old piano. I absolutely love it. It has tons of tuning issues, but heck. <laughs> so what did I do? I got rid of some unwanted low end here. I also ducked out some low mids because the guitars were quite thick, the electric guitar. I just didn't feel like I needed more going on in there. And with the only mono sources, you know, because we're only using one input, I didn't want to get too crowded in that center and have like loads of low mid and low end, but I did want the piano to be mono and I wanted it to be down the center underneath the vocal. So I boosted quite a lot of high mids there to get it aggressive. And I've cut those low mids and I've cut the low end. And then I am using the MV2 to squash the schnizzle out of it. All we have is just two more elements, which is the lead vocals and the background. Here is the lead vocal. Again, the LCT 440, the Lewitt. I hope you're dancing in the sunshine And that smile don't leave your face Cause the way that things been going now, I mix this in the way that um, I always do with a little bit of distortion on the vocal, a little bit, a lower octave tucked in down there. Then I'm using my reverbs and delays like I normally do. Um, so what I suggest is we're going to put a link down here to like our vocal mixing video, which is one of our most popular videos. It's got over a million views. And everything I did on this vocal was done in that video. So you're going to get that. Of course, there's a double as well. Then I've got the vocal thickening trick, which is done with the H3000. When you come to mix this, just use it sparingly. It's just there to just push the vocal a little bit more forward. I hope you're dancing in the sunshine. And then I printed some hardware um, lexicon settings on reverbs. There's two here. There's an echo plate and a vocal magic. So quiet, but I can turn them up just so you can hear them. So you're going to get all of those things to play with. And last but no means least, of course, probably the highlight of this song, quite frankly, is just the absolutely incredible background vocals. So if we just take those and just solo those for a second. I hope you're dancing in the sunshine. Ooh, Cause the way that things been going. Quite aggressively compressed, no EQ to brighten it. You know, I kept it darker, as you can tell. But to be honest, that sort of works. I think if we brighten them up too much, it's going to take away from the lead vocal. But let's just go to the end and listen to Steve's vocal at the very end here. The background with the lead. This is just a highlight for me on this song. All the ways you cope with being free 
And while you're awake and dreaming about the life you could be leading, no oh, Gracie, Gracie. So good, so good. All the ways you cope with being free. While you're awake and dreaming about the life you could be leading, no oh, Gracie. You know, I'll be really blunt. There's not really any excuse for that. That's a This is a really, really inexpensive unit. It's obviously some great musicianship. Steve's super talented. The song's wonderful. Blair's a great drummer. I'm a fairly decent guitar player and bass player. I mean, it's really just about the creativity. For a unit that's, you know, super, super cheap, the only thing, and we used inexpensive microphones, the Lewitt microphones, the only thing holding you back really is the creativity and capturing the performances. You know, you watch Julian's uh, breakdown on the specs of the unit, how much headroom is there compared with, I mean, anything else in its price range. It, it just specs out really, really well. It's, you know, according to Julian, I mean, the, it's almost zero noise. I think he said, if I can paraphrase him, that it was below the measuring abilities that he had. That's how quiet it is. Another thing I like about the Audion gear, especially this new revamped ID range, is because it's so clean, because it's so, I hate the word, but I'm going to use it, transparent, it means that whatever you want to do, like applying compression or additional EQ or saturation or whatever it might be, all of those things are going to be left up to you. You are not going to be in a world where you're like, oh, I wish I'd used a different mic pre. I wish I'd done this. I wish I'd done that. For those of us like myself that have tons and tons of gear, if I wanted to, I could choose this mic pre with that compressor and this microphone. But now, for a very, very limited budget, you can buy a great unit like the ID4 and just use a few hundred dollars worth of plugins as opposed to tens and tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear. I'm really, really impressed by this. I've always loved audience stuff. It's always incredibly well made. They've always looked after their customer base. And they already had a dominant product as far as I could tell. I mean, the ID range was already selling like hotcakes. So not many people, it's not, it's not the mentality of modern companies, is it, to any companies to go out and spend money on research and development and improve a product that's already your cash cow. So we've got to take our hats off to a company that takes a really well-selling product that they're making a lot of money and then pumps tons of money back into it to make it better, to make sure that it's the number one. I'm very, very impressed. I love a lot of products. I love a lot of different companies and stuff, but I will say the ID range this new ID range is super, super impressive. We're going to do the ID 14 probably the next week or two, so check back for that. But I can 100% stand behind this ID 4 and tell you that I'm really, really impressed. Please don't forget to enter to win one of these beautiful ID4s. And thank you ever so much for watching. Don't forget to download the multitrack so you can mix for yourself. And remember, as a musician, if you want to replay something or add something, dying to hear it. You can put this song in your portfolio. You can use it to get work. If you want to replay the drums and have more mics on the drums and more stereo width, which of course we didn't, feel free. If you want to replay my guitars, if you want to take the vocal and remix it or do anything, feel free to do it. So enter to win, download the multitracks. Thanks ever so much for watching. So long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, au revoir. Thank you. Tschüss. Goodbye. <laughs>